Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is the next part of Robot X, the real walking, talking, reconfigurable sci-fi robot. But now we're going to build another character on it, and we're going to build... Almost Spider-Man, we're going to build Iron Spider-Man. So it's going to be an Iron Man suit-inspired Spider-Man build. Now, we've already dressed this robot up as Bender from Futurama and made him dance and do stupid things, and now I'm going for a more robotic character. So the character will actually be able to walk along. It's a real walking, talking robot, so we've done quite a bit of uh, walking development, and I'm hoping to improve on that during the series. Last time I added the arms and we made those work with the new controller, so I've got various modes now I can scroll through, in fact almost an infinite amount of modes I could have to do different poses and things, and that controller will eventually control sounds, lights, various poses and postures. We are going to make something that's fairly heavily armoured inspired, it's not going to be much like Iron Spider-Man from the comics, but um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the proportions of the robot, so I've been quite careful as I've built it to try and maintain proportions. The main problem is these uh, massive blocks here that hold rotational axis for the legs, which I haven't actually put a motor on yet, um, but obviously looking at it, it looks like the torso is quite short and the legs are quite long and the shoulders are quite high, so I've just built... Um, some little parts here, they're just basically sort of uh, temporary parts so that we can see uh, what it looks like when the rest of the parts are there. So obviously the forearms are shorter, so I've just added these blocks which is where the forearms will be. Obviously there's no cod plate, the actuators do uh, lean out in a sort of triangle shape. Um, but without that, um, it looks like the legs are much longer than they really are, of course, and pretty much the pivot point is at um, this sort of height. So, uh, obviously with the head on, there's no shoulders, of course, at the moment, and those will be built round, then the head has to go on top of there. So actually, with those features added, um, it's much better proportions than it looks without them. So this should be a kind of a human proportioned character. It is a bit tubby in the middle as I say, uh, but we'll have to sort of armour around that. Also at the back, it looks like the back is non-existent. Um, there is in fact an actuator there that controls the torso, so that'll be, have to be armoured around uh, with some big armoured plates. And of course Iron Spider-Man has those kind of extra arms on his back. Not sure if I'm going to build those, but we'll see how it goes once the rest is done. So I need to draw Spider-Man's head, and it's fairly fluid. It's going to be robotic, so it's going to have some sharp corners on, but basically we need to have something that resembles a classic Spider-Man. So um, the way I decided to do this is by uh, drawing a bunch of sketches, and these are all on different planes. So I'm using Fusion 360. If I turn all the planes on, you can see I've put these planes in, and I've just gone with the sketch tool and drawn a bunch of sketches there. Um, I've then done something called a loft, which joins them all together, and it makes a solid object. So you can see the top and bottom has got a hole which we can patch, but uh, basically that's made um, the sort of face there. So um, we can change the material so it's not so shiny. So you can kind of see there, or we can uh, do what we want with it there. We can say how uh, rough it is and how shiny it is, and that'll... Um, kind of help us see the contours and if there's any funny creases or anything like that but um, I've messed around with it quite a bit to adjust it and I think we're just about there. Now I can go and still adjust these so if I go and take this one for instance and pull it right out it will go and uh, modify the mesh. So I spent quite a long time uh, modifying them after I drew them I didn't get it right uh, first time by any means. So if we get rid of the sketches um, I've then gone and patched the top and the bottom and made those into uh, sort of patches there, we can smooth those out later, so this is now um, completely watertight. I have gone and mirrored it, so uh, basically what's happened next is I've cut it in half because my sketches weren't all perfectly symmetrical, I didn't plan mapping them out very well, so um, I've basically made a mirror there, and if we now get rid of the other side, we've got um, in fact two bodies, and this is, um, I've done a, what's called a boundary fill, and that's turned that into a solid object, so this is actually now solid and we can edit it in modelling mode. I'm pretty happy overall with how it's come out, so if we uh, look from the bottom there we can almost see a human face inside with the cheekbones, the nose, um, there's a little recess where the mouth is, so you kind of get that re uh, recess or reflection where uh, where the mouth should be, so altogether not too unhappy. I'm going to be cutting the back out because it's robotic and it needs actuators, so it's going to be quite robotically styled, but I'm pretty happy with my overall shape. I've imported that head and scaled it to fit the body, and I think the proportions are about right there. I've made it 5% wider than it was, and uh, just scaled the other dimensions so it looks like the right height. 
Um, I think that's pretty good. We'll still be able to scale it, of course, as we go. But um, I think that'll be fine once the other armor and stuff is on, so the robot will be slightly more bulky. Obviously, we're missing Spider-Man's eyes at the moment, which are a significant feature of the head, but they're going to be separate drop-in pieces. So now I know the scale for the head, I was able to shell out each side and hollow it out. So if we just hide one side of it there, we can see we've got two hollow halves. It may need to be cut up further for printing, but um, that's a really good start, and all the mechanism and so on can go inside. So I've uh, basically gone and got an image for the eyes off Google Images. I just uh, picked the first Spider-Man eyes that look about right, and you can apply those as a decal in Fusion 360, so you can just basically go and put them on there and slide them all around, and uh, put them where you want. And um, I've just tried to position the images there, so I've got a marker for cutting to try and get the proportions, and I think they're just in the right place. They don't want to go too high. Spider-Man has pretty slow slung eyes in most pictures, but I think that will just about do. I've used that eye decal to um, position a plane here and draw a sketch that you can see floating there, and then I've used that sketch to actually, actually split that uh, solid. So these are now separate pieces, so I can um, get rid of the lens there or the surround, whatever I want, and I've got an empty shell. So I think that's the right place for the eyes, we just need to do some finishing touches before we can print the main shell. I've added mounting points to the head so we can mount it on the mechanism and attach the two halves together, obviously the head has to move all around on the neck. I was going to add some sharper robotic um, kind of elements to the neck at the back there, but I think I'm going to stick those on as a separate piece once I know what the style of the rest of the suit looks like. And here it is, and it only took 24 hours to print. The other one is still going, in fact, and the main reason for that is that it's absolutely full of support material. In fact, it weighs loads, um, and obviously there's not really much choice there in terms of how it's going to be printed. So we need to tear all the support material out, um, and then we should have something pretty good. Right, I've sorted out most of the support material. You can see my mounting points there, and it's pretty clean, actually. The inside's not too bad, and the outside's not too bad either. So it's printed in a 025 mil layer height. Obviously, it suffers worse here. You can see those layers are gonna need sanding. The whole thing will be needing sanding, filling, and finishing, but I'm pretty happy with that altogether. It is PLA, so it hasn't warped, and the layer bonding's pretty good, so it's actually pretty tough and it's two mil thick. But now we need to talk about those eyes. Right, so I've just uh, modified that eye surround a little bit, and if we just hide the head there, we can see that in fact it's kind of got this uh, two-layered approach, and the uh, big layer doesn't fit through the hole, and the small one does, of course. So um, that means that it should push in from the inside and uh, sit nicely in that hole there. I've also left a little bit of clearance all the way around, just a tiny gap. Uh, obviously there's some uh, tolerance issues with the prints matching up. So um, what I've in fact also done is uh, made some kind of inner parts, those will be black as well, they're green uh, just for the purposes of being able to see them, and those in fact hinge around this point, and they give that effect that we've seen in the new um, Spider-Man movie trailer where the eyes can kind of blink, so if you can imagine those closing in like an iris shutting at the top and bottom, and uh, there'll be a servo above and below to push them on those round points. So I've left the top one a bit wider so it can push down further, because obviously when you're looking from the top, it'll be easier to see the bottom one and not so easy to see the top one so the top one will probably have to move further and those should overlap and they should both slide over each other helpfully so we need to print those and see how that turns out. Right, so the other side of the head finished, and now we've got two of them, and those eyes fit in pretty well. So that's an excellent push fit in there, and it holds itself in without anything else, and I've also got the other top and bottom lids 
which should move. So we just need to sort of sort out putting those in there with a pivot and seeing what we get out of it. I fitted those eyelids inside there. There's a screw with some washers in between each piece so they run smoothly. They do scrape on each other a bit, but that's unavoidable. So those can uh, obviously both move and they'll be both be pushed with servos there. So that is pretty much what the eye looks like closed. I can uh, move the top one down quite a bit. When it's open, of course, we get the normal clean eye. But we now need to add some servos to push those. Right, I've just built an Arduino circuit uh, to control my four servos with a switch. This is just really for testing. When I press the switch, they will move. And when I let go, they move back. And I can control the positions individually for each eyelid. In the end, the cosmetics for Iron Spider-Man will have their own controller. It may well be this, and there's going to be many more features in it. And that, of course, will be controlled from the main controller for the robot that I built last time. Have a look at that. So we've got lots of menu options and buttons, and the whole control surface can change depending on which mode I'm in, which is displayed on the display. Okay, so I fitted the servos in there, and I've made these sort of U-shaped things that are attached to the surface. And because everything's at funny angles, that means I can put the servo how I want, so that one's not in there straight, but it means the angle of the horn moving matches the contour of the head better. So now, of course, this makes the eye shut. So one servo moves that way, the other one moves that way. Let's tip that up to shut the bottom lid. And this is what it looks like from the outside. And I mentioned that top lid moves further and it's bigger and that's because probably we're slightly taller than the robot so we'll be looking at this angle. So that means hopefully we can see the eyelids um, equally just about. Obviously the head needs to be mounted on something and it also needs to move in all directions um, so it can look side to side and turn and that's a bit like Ultron's head. So if I take off one side of the head here we can see in fact I've made this frame inside and it fits to those mounting points I left. And uh, basically it's made of several pieces that could be printed, so we've got this blue piece and we've got three green bits, which also of course tie the two halves of the head together. And I'm not sure if I'm going to sand and fill and uh, patch up that seam line or what's going to happen, but for now I just need to mechanically attach them. Um, also we've got a pivot point on the blue piece this way for the head to tip backwards and forwards and that's attached to another pivot that allows it to tip sideways. So we'll have that on a rotary motor that means the whole head can rotate and then we'll have two levers coming up to this front green part that mean it can move around and it can pan and tilt. Have a look at the Ultron series to see an example of that. Right, there's half of it, so uh, that's screwed into the screw points, and of course the other half of the head attaches to those, so we just need to uh, get those screwed together, and we should be good to go. All right, so there it is all in one piece, so obviously both eyes work. And that looks pretty good. The seam line's pretty good, there's a couple of little gaps, just where the... Uh, I guess there has been a minor bit of warping in the prints, but um, pretty much they fit together pretty well. So in terms of its scale, it needs to live about that height, I think, which is about the right place. And that'll, of course, need some neck mountings and so on. The head, of course, has a hinge in which allows it to lean backwards and forwards, and that attaches to the other piece, which allows it to then lean sideways. So, of course, this piece will need to be attached to a piece that turns that way. And then we'll have two servos in the front with rods like Ultron's head that allow it to do this and this, so we get all three axes of roll, pitch, and yaw. All right, that's the end of this episode. Next time we're gonna be putting the head on properly and hopefully mapping out the shoulders and torso so we can get that height just about right and it doesn't look so very silly when I put it on there. So don't forget that new videos come out every Tuesday and sometimes on Friday, so don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more on this project and other projects. Also, most of my projects are funded through Patreon, so have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Alright, that's all for now.